stay home for labor, isolate solidarity. Let's get together on Zoom, see into people's bedrooms. We're all boys for free. Stay home for labor, with Crispin as your MC. Get used to the smell of your fragrant hand gel, hands like an ancient mummy. I said stay Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats for Stay Home for Labour. Please welcome your host, Crispin Flintoff. Hey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Alison. You, you, uh, how are you doing, Alison? You good? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Pretty sad in our house this morning. We all shed all right, a tear. Well, I'm, just going to, I'm just going to find out the, the results of the... Um, of the election, uh, Labour leadership. There's a. Did you know about the vote? They had a vote to, uh, for le leader of the party. Uh, I'm just. I'm just looking on the website. It's taking a long time actually to to uh, to get downloaded it onto my phone. But I, I've just got it here. It says. Um, oh, uh, Keir Starmer. <laughs> Keir Starmer's won. Keir, Keir Starmer's won. Uh, so uh, let's get some. Let's get some reaction. Did, Tosh, Keir Starmer has won the uh, leadership vote. Uh, what, what's your What's your take on that? Well, I, obviously, I'm disappointed. I was hoping it'd be Rebecca Long Bailey, but uh, we are where we are. We'll have to see if we can uh, do something to unite the party. Now, uh, I think it's going to be difficult in areas like here in South Yorkshire, where uh, I think he was the, the reason we lost votes in South Yorkshire because of the Brexit uh, debacle, which was all he's doing, to be quite honest. But we listen. I've, I've, all the different Labour leaders we've had since I've been a member, I've never worked against any of them. But I think Keir Starmer has got something to prove. All right. Well, uh, I, I, I I promised everyone that we'd have a fair kind of uh, cross section of people talking about this. So um, it, it's only a minute and a half, and you've gone. You've been a bit short there, Tosh. But um, oh, I'll come back in then. No, no, no you, you've had your go now. You've had your go. Um, <laughs> But before, before we get on, I'd just like to say that if anyone who wants to chat about this uh, wants to make their points known about it, there's a chat option in, in Zoom that you might see at the bottom of your screen. And you can just add your comments to that. There's lots of chat going on already, I see. Um, so uh, Wendy, who's one of our co-hosts for today uh, from Newark CLP, what, what's, your, what's your view on um, Keir Starmer as, as leader? Well... Hi Crispin, hi, hi everyone. Um, well, I'm glad it's all over. Um, I'm hoping that lockdown isn't going to be as long as the election we've had. So I'm pleased it's all over. Um, another point is I find it um, strange and embarrassing that the party appears incapable of electing a woman as leader especially with all the excellent uh, Labour MPs uh, that we have. Thirdly, um, none of the people who've been elected today, including on the NEC, were my choice. Um, and it's very concerning to see a lot of people um, who are leaving the party this morning after the results have come out. And um, I think the party is not um, the leader the party is the membership and if if we can stomach it we should stay uh, and keep and keep uh, the party on track with the policies in the manifestos uh, of the election last year and in 2017 that's my bit well, well thank Thank you, Wendy. That that was very very shortly concise and, and to the point. Uh, and uh, obviously, you've you've chewed over this result longer than a minute that, that, <clears throat> that I thought you'd had. Um, Mark, Mark, how, how are you doing in Workington? Uh, what, yeah, I'm good. What, what's your What's your take on the leadership result? Uh, I voted for Corbyn initially. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was ultra left, um, but I wanted my soul back. And I got it back. Um, the jury's out on Kia, but I'll support him all heartedly, um, as we all should do. I uh, see all the people want to resign. Well, uh, I don't think GSE's resigned from the party. 
Um, he's stuck in. He's stuck in over a long, 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 long period of time where he's almost been a pariah in the early 80s and through the 80s. So, look, I, I didn't like um, the approach that some of the MPs took when uh, when Jeremy was appointed. I, I aborted some of them. I, I could... I'm, I'm, I'm okay. The party's... Uh, we've got to move on. We've got to get behind the leader and... and uh, fight for a for a government that looks after our people oh uh, th thanks mark and alison i i cut you oh, off hi. early because you seem to have prior yeah, knowledge we're sad. yeah yeah we heard it earlier oh, right. <laughs> some other people maybe did uh we we're very sad in our house because uh, we we're very big fans of jeremy corbyn uh but you know we're going to stick in labor party you know we need to stay and fight uh, we're not just going to leave or join another party or whatever. So, yeah, that's uh, that's us in Windsor. So uh, I think a lot of our members feel the same. So I spoke to quite a few of them this morning. Uh, you know, I, I didn't vote for Keir Starmer. Um, pretty disappointed in the way he behaved, you know, over the, when Jeremy Corbyn was elected. And um, But, you know, we'll give him a chance, see what he, see what he comes up with. So. Okay. And um, and we've also we've got Libby in, in Brighton. Are you there, Libby? Hello, Crispin. Yeah. I'm so here. how's it down in Brighton? Well, same as everywhere else, isn't it? Oh, right. We're locked in. We've lost the best leader we ever had. So it's pretty depressing. Um, obviously, I wanted someone who represents me. I felt in Jeremy I had someone who represents me, and in Rebecca I would have had a working mum with a regional accent. Um, you know, I'd like to have one of those in charge. You know, make me feel a lot better. But um, you know, we've got to remember Jeremy's legacy and what he's done. He's changed the party for good. He's staying in, we stay in. That's that's what I say. Um, and you know, um, I'm I'm a bit of an optimist. In fact, I'm a ridiculous optimist. And I think you know, we can you know us lefties. There's a huge amount of us in the party, and um, it's up to us to keep the party left. And um, and I've got a great optimism. You know, I mean, if Boris Johnson can start introducing socialist policies, then um, just shows anyone can move to the left. So. You know, let's uh, let's stay in, folks, and make sure we keep it as socialist as we possibly can. Oh well, uh, I'm sorry to hear you're so sad about it, and uh, yeah, it's sad about Jeremy not being leader anymore. And I, I've just realised I've still got my um, Jeremy Corbyn Superman T-shirt on, so I better change that because it's um, it, uh, it's not it's not. Uh, I'll, I'll change that when someone else is on camera. I don't want you to. <laughs> go through seeing, seeing that uh but i'll do that during the show um and and we've also we've got joe bird from liverpool thank you very much Burke and ed actually oh, over sorry. the river mersey from Mersey's, liverpool yeah. but it's all merseyside and thank you so much to all forty six thousand one hundred and fifty members of the labour party who voted for me for the nec and um, unfortunately it wasn't enough to win this time but i would take in the message it's, a, it's I came forth and it's a it's quite a resounding vote actually for the things that I was standing for fairness innocent until proven guilty to stop suspensions before investigation Absolutely. That kind of thing. and in terms of the leadership you know 56 percent of Labour members voted for Keir Starmer and we need to reflect on that I hope that Sir Keir Starmer stands up for the key issues of our time um, which, which right now is people are dying from coronavirus. We need adequate protection for our frontline warriors in this war against the disease. They need PPE, they need um, testing, they need their voices to be heard and listened to and responded to. Um, there's uh, you know, nurses, care workers, cleaners, you know, the people, we need an army of people caring like that, not an army of soldiers, which this government has prepared as well for war and prepared as with Trident, but they haven't prepared us for public health. And that's what we need Labour to hold the Tories to account on. Yeah, uh, so, so you, you, your, your vote in, in the NEC, you, 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 uh, you came forth, you say? Yeah. But, but you had quite a big vote, didn't you, as well? So. 
Do you feel the rights about that? I would rather have won this that battle, but the, but the long the fight continues. We're all in this for the long term. It's not like we get to leave our lives behind or injustice gets to walk away. We have to fight for that. It's like JC Jeremy said in his, his farewell letter to us all, um, that we can have a society based on social justice, equality and care for the environment. It will not come about unless we fight for it. And that's what we're going to do together. Right, yeah, it's very, very positive. Um, thank you, Joe. And um, uh, Ian Hodson, are you there? Are you there, Ian? Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah Ian Hodson. You can't hear me anyway, you know what I mean? From the bakers. <laughs> yeah, so what's your, what's your take on the leadership election? Well, first off, how come I've got two Toshis on my screen? I didn't realise he had a twin brother. <laughs> so there only one of me, didn't you? I did, I did. You're multiplying. I mean, obviously today it's not quite as bad as what I thought. There's two, there's two Toshis. <laughs> Things can only get better. I mean, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously, we we were disappointed. I think you know we were disappointed in December, but we got over it. We'll, we're disappointed today. What I, would, what I would say about about it is obviously you know all that argument about Jeremy Corbyn being too London and obviously the Labour Party being too London based. Obviously the uh, the people today have decided that, that they want to continue uh, that approach with uh, electing the only London candidate that, that was actually standing <laughs> yeah. in the, in Keir Starmer. Um, so that is interesting, you know. Um, but I do think it's also interesting that, that Keir Starmer didn't have. The ability or the courage to stand on his real platform. Um, he had to stand on, on, on a socialist platform and claim to be the unity candidate um, and obviously commit himself to, to the policies uh, that the Labour Party has adopted in 2017 and 2019 and I think those people that are leaving the party today need to consider that because the only way we're going to maintain uh, those policies is by staying in the party and fighting for them and I think it's very very important that although we may not have had a successful day today you know it took us years to, to get Jeremy Corbyn elected um, and you know we did it I mean and we shouldn't we shouldn't lose we shouldn't lose uh, the, the, the the ability to fight just because you know there's a there's another right winger been elected to the leader of the Labour Party uh, we, we we are here We've got the right message. More than 10 million people voted for, for, for Jeremy Corbyn's policies, you know, and, and that's something for us to build on. And I think we should have the confidence in our conviction uh, to carry on the fight. Right, well, there's a lot of uh, positive uh, messages about carrying on the fight that Jeremy Corbyn, you know, he gave us this, this, these new values in the Labour Party. And, 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 and also we saw that um, Keir Starmer was saying that he supported most of those policies as well. I mean, people are saying that he, he may have said that to win votes, but we never know. Uh, he, may, he may well honour um, those pledges that he, he made. So that, that, that's, that's a kind of positive. We can always push him to, to, to continue that if, if, if that's what we want. You know, we do want that. Um, and I, I feel pretty pretty down that Jeremy Corbyn's not not the leader anymore. He's a great time. Um, I was just going to say, have we got have we got uh, have we got Mick Shaw on? Are you there, Mick? Mick? Mick there? Have a look, Mick. Not there. No, he's not there. Okay, Mandy, are you there, Mandy McKenna? If you're in the right next door, yeah. Uh, Mandy, there. Mandy. Can you keep me? I can hear you, Mandy. Okay, great. And um, just to say that, uh, yeah, um, it's a disappointment for me that Keir's been elected, but nevertheless, um, we have to go forward. And my view is that we have to hold him to account over the Board of Deputy pledges. We have to see that that there isn't an external body um, influencing the Labour Party unnecessarily. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we need, to, we need unity between, for everybody, including the Windrush generation, Palestinians, Jews, the NHS workers. We need to all come together in equality and um, make sure that the Labour Party withholds, upholds its socialist democratic values.
Oh, I can't actually see you, Mandy, which is a, which is a disappointment. Uh, Sorry, I, 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 I don't know quite why I'm not coming up on the screen. You're, you're appearing as Tosh. It's like Tosh has <laughs> got your voice. Uh, <laughs> which is quite good. It's like it's, we had Ian Savile on before doing ventriloquism, but I, I, this has gone to a <laughs> free level. Um, it but, seems uh, there's no end to my talents. Yeah, you just you're just being a mouthpiece to everyone, Tosh. Everyone's just speaking through Tosh. You'll speak through Tosh that time. All right, there's Rob. Uh, how are you doing, Rob? Yeah, oh, yeah, all right, all good. Yeah, are you, you're going to be doing a song at the end, yeah. I certainly will. Yes, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll look forward to that because um, we we hear there's a special tribute you're going to do. Is that right today? That's right. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. At last, uh, short notice, we can do a tribute to Bill Withers. And, and we'll also do that as a tribute to uh, all the workers in the uh, hospitals and the care service and the people who, and the people who collected my bins this morning. Bin, bin, bin workers came around collecting my bins. Isn't that just wonderful? Oh, oh look. Oh, well, look, 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 we've just got Boris. Is just, sorry, Boris on That's, the blog. He's just oh, interrupted you. I think, he's, I think he's, he's not got long before he's got to go somewhere, apparently. Um, Boris, can you, can you hear us? Yes, I can. And, and, and just to say, everybody, hello. And, and yes, the bin men are delivering on, on Saturday, which was one of my pledges in the election. <laughs> not, not. Yes, it too. Just to fill you in, because my son is in the lounge there waving at me. Well, he doesn't know what I'm doing, so it's fucking nuts from where he's sitting. But anyway, anyway, I'll be here. So it's, which, uh, son? Second... which son is that, Boris? Which son? Um, yeah. Number one. Number one, son. All right, number one, one son who's, who's from uh, Southampton this morning, the Labour Party member, of course. So, uh, so here we are, at the end of the second week, folks. And uh, I have to tell you, uh, I'm in self isolation, Boris on the ball, uh, in the flat in Downing Street, and uh, the, my meals are being left outside the door, and my wife has gone away. So, no change there, then. Okay, right. Fantastic. So, moving on. Um, what I wanted to say was, uh, I've still got plenty of toilet roll here, as you can see, but if that should run out, if that should run out, I've got a few uh, Russian reports and cabinet briefing papers and a whole stack of complaints about pretty Patel. <laughs> so, I'm quite happy should that to kick in. But, um, oh, sorry, stop press, stop press. Okay, I'll, I'll have to put my spectacles on to read this week. A letter's just come through. Um, Okay, hang on, yes. It says, an important letter from COVID-19. A spokesperson for coronavirus said, COVID-19 is doing all it can to deal with the outbreak of Boris Johnson. Or COVID-19. <laughs> what? The, the virus urges people to continue to avoid contact with or listening to Boris Johnson and that he can be caught even by watching television. So keep watching Columbus. It's one of you Yay! Kids, right? <laughs> Columbo! Yes, that's what you gotta do, folks. Keep watching Columbo. <laughs> Despite good weather, folks, this weekend, here in, in sunny Downing Street, good weather, COVID-19 pleads with the British people to continue to ignore Boris Johnson for the sake of our NHS, care workers, and minority <laughs> viruses everywhere. Ah. Well, there you go. I mean, how fair is that? My whole political career has been inoculated against disaster. My every transgression, transgression, cured with, uh, cured by uh, basically people uh, looking at me and saying, give them a large dose of tolerance. Mm. Yeah, that's what they've done. Now the restrictions I've imposed, folks, I, I didn't realize I had to be a part, I mean, I had to abide by them myself. Now this is again a failing of the Labour opposition, so let's hope now that Sir Keir Starmer, as leader of the Labour Party, will become the Prime Minister and put all of this right. Is that right? Apparently I've got 500 Scotch eggs in the fridge because uh, I misunderstood the, uh, the instruction at the start of this and I thought people were picnic by it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the man who invented hand sanitizer, he's wrung his hands together now. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I thought like threw a couple of those in. Boris, that's a terrible, terrible joke there. Yes, I thought I'd throw <laughs> that in. Just you, you got it. Um, we, we bet, I've, I've just thought, but thank you for joining us, Boris. I, I know you're yes. under a, a lot of pressure um, at the moment. Where I'm sad, um, I am. So yes. it's good that you could find a bit of time to, to you know, to, to dial in. Yeah. Yes, I will indeed. 
Thank you, folks. I must now go and see my Thank son you. before Thank I'm arrested. Boy. Thank you. Um, Over the glass. I've just, seen, I've just seen that Mick's, um, Mick's online, uh, but he's called Jill, which is a bit confusing, Mick. Uh, Hello. I don't normally, I don't normally, um, it's very difficult to find you when you're called Jill, but uh, we, we got you, we found you. Um, I, haven't, I haven't used Jill's laptop, that's the problem. So it, you've only got a minute and a half, because I know that you like to talk a bit, Mick, so uh, I've, got a, I've put a limit on people's, uh, what, what's your take on the leadership election result? Well, obviously, like everybody else, very sad. Uh, I'm sad that uh, Becky didn't get in, uh, being a North West lad myself, uh, you know. Um, but I I'm also very sad to see a lot of so-called left-wingers deserting the party today um, because Keir Starmer's been elected. Um, I, I can go back to the miners' strike, and I remember Keir Starmer uh, representing striking miners who were nicked in London for free. You know, so I'm not having it, this accusation that he's some sort of blur I, I can't really accept that. I'm as upset as everybody else, and, and I'll back him. I'll back him because I'm a Labour Party member. Um, the upsetting thing for me today is on Facebook especially, is watching these people um, cutting the Labour Party cards up uh, and deserting the party. It, Keir Starmer's landed a golden egg, and that, that golden egg is the radical policies that have been put into place by the members and Jeremy Corbyn under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. And that's what we should be fighting to keep. He says they're going to stay. And, and as long as they stay, I don't care if he's leading the party. But we've got those radical policies and we, the members, are making them. Then I'm an happy chap. Okay, thank well, th thank you, Mick. That was short and sweet. Well, you know. No, no more. That's fine. I did't, wasn't prompting any more, but it, it was good to it, it was good to um, hear your take on the miners' uh, strike. I hadn't heard that before, so it was very on, interesting. I was, on strike, I was on strike twelve months during that strike, uh, and I remember that Keir Starmer represented striking miners who were nicked in London on marches, and and he represented those lads in court, and he didn't charge a penny. Oh, that's you know what I mean. So he, he is. Um, uh, a great supporter of the human rights as well. Let's let's not forget that, you know. Oh, uh, well, but what's upsetting for me is these people leaving the party today. Uh, well, I don't think anyone here has has suggested doing that. And I I think we if no. we're positive. I, if, well, I'm just saying if if we can p push out the positive ideas of what we can do, rather than yeah saying that. I mean, there, there's another side to it. Well, the positive side. We don't have to be cutting up cards. It's, it doesn't help anyone really, because no. they're not they're not even going to save that much money. It's only about two, what is it? It's like about, how much is it? 50 quid? So it's about yeah. about four quid a month they're saving by um, <laughs> by not by not being a member. I don't, it's not, you know, it's not a great it's amount. Tosh, but, and Tosh said you back the leader. So let's back him and let's see where we go. You know, not walk away from the party. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really shocked me today, that, that so many are doing it. Facebook's probably the main culprits are on there. All right. All right, well, th th thanks for that, Mick. Um, I, do, I, I want to now move on to our, our, our three uh, regular comedians that we have um, on the show, who are Patrick Monaghan, Susie Bennett and, and Don Biswas. They've all been doing lots of Stand Up For Labour shows in, in the past, uh, they obviously don't have that outlet anymore. So part of the reason for these shows is to keep them going with um, doing comedy, writing jokes, uh, but also they don't have any funds. So we're, we're trying to raise some funds for them. So if you can donate any money, um, there's, a, there's a link um, on the chat room. Um, and I'll also be sending out the link after the show to anyone, if you can help. Um, and, and the running cost for the show as well. So uh, all of that, that would be helpful. But I'd like to, first of all, ask Patrick, is he, are you there, Patrick? Is Patrick there? No. He was. He was. Oh, right. that's not as good as him being here, but um, <laughs> I prefer it when, oh, he's there. I can see him. Right, Patrick, there yeah. you are. Can you hear me? Yeah, you, 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 I can hear you well now. The signal's good. The dog's not yapping. Yeah, the dog's not yapping. And can I just say, listen, Chris, I've been listening long. And 
all my stuff, this is what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks, is just focusing on positive stuff. I know today we've heard a lot of people for and against Kira Starmer. Can I just say, whether you like him or not, he was the best lead singer of 1980s AHA band. <laughs> that is according to Wikipedia. That's, the, um, that's what I'm relying on, proper facts. Um, but yeah, listen, it's... Look, today has been, you know, awkward for everyone with, with what's happening with the leadership, but also with Corona. And I thought, you know what I'm doing? I'm focusing on positive things. One of the things today and this week, antisocial behaviour has fallen by 6,000%. Now, <laughs> you know what I do? It was Saturday morning. You know what I did this Saturday morning? I had to go out. I had to put my own graffiti up. I had to knock my own wheel bin over. I had to go and move three to bus stops. I'm bloody sick of it. I'm sick of it now. I had to go. I literally, I'm missing traffic. I don't know how it is like in the rest of the UK, but where we live, and you know where I live, Chris, but there's a massive, it's literally like a dual carriage outside. There's no, there's no cars. I've had to walk up and down the road looking for traffic cones because nobody's leaving. <laughs> and then, and then this was, this was something really nice, really positive that, and I couldn't believe this, but I don't know if, if other people have noticed this as well, but they actually say that manners have improved since the coronavirus. Uh, there was a report that came out literally just before um, the corona, obviously before the COVID-19 outbreak last year, and it said that 80% of people who were surveyed had said that they'd been to someone's house and uh, they didn't switch the TV off when they went round, they didn't offer to take their jacket and all this sort of thing. And I think, do you know what? After the coronavirus, when someone comes around my house, do you know, the first thing you do is you're going to be turning the TV off because we've been watching it for three months. We're just desperate to check out the one who, who hasn't been repeated on the TV. And it's not a box set that we've seen seven times. And then taking the jacket, and I don't know how many people here have noticed that. I mean, you've got a lovely jacket, Chris, and a lot of people will probably try and take that off you. But yeah, I... And I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna, me, I'm gonna hold my hand up here, Crispin. I know it's easy to slag people off and go, yeah, but you know, when people come round, you know, it just sounds old fashioned. We don't know whether to offer to take their jacket. But we were always told when someone comes round, you offer you offer them a biscuit, you take the jacket. And now, let me tell you this, Crispin, if someone comes around the house now after corona, I'll be taking their jacket, I'll be putting it in a plastic bag. And if they've got a cough, it's going straight in the fire. I'm burning it. <laughs> Chance, there's any bacteria. We've got to be strong now with this sort of thing. I mean, there's loads of other positive points I've got, but I've got a feeling I might be here for an hour. Oh, well, you're full of positivity then. Yeah, I want to keep it positive because that's that's what I've been doing really the last the last week or whatever the days, just looking at focusing on positive things to make you know to get through this because I think it will take a long time. I think the last thing, just the very last thing, I'll tell you, Chris, and I don't know if you've noticed this particularly, maybe not so much with your with your child because he's very young, but maybe with your daughter. And a lot of the people here with the kids might notice this, but they're saying that also a lot of people now, after this, won't be at dinner tables, they won't be using their mobile phone. And I think that's a positive thing because of Corona, because during the Corona virus, um, virus what's been happening is a lot of people have been spending eight or nine hours a day dancing and then putting stuff on TikTok. Whereas after the coronavirus, everyone's gonna have to go back and get a proper job. So we're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> so, To be honest, I'm, Happy Crispin, I think I'm looking forward to um, September 2028 20, when we're all back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don, you're, Don, you're about, Don's there. Hello, Crispin. Uh, uh, what have you been up to this week? Well, Crispin, uh, I'm a bit confused. Can I just check with you, Don? Did, did, did uh, Stephen Kennett come around for that, that party? <laughs> right? No, no, he didn't. He didn't. Huh? I'm a bit confused, Christopher. I've been in isolation for so long, I thought Ed Miliband was still Labour leader. <laughs> uh, who is leader now? Who is this Keir Starmer you're talking about? But um, I went for my daily walk today and someone took one look at me from the window and shouted, go home. Now, I didn't know if that was racism or safe corona advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, what I'd like to say is that we live in very testing times at the moment with the coronavirus, coronavirus COVID-19. Sorry, this is the UK, non-testing times, non-testing times. <laughs> uh, uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Keir Starmer. One thing I would say is we need to keep a left-wing slant of the party. Because before Jeremy Corbyn got elected, have you ever noticed that both the main political parties were exactly the same? Both went to legal wars in the Middle East, both helped their friends in the city. You don't get much choice in the media. All you get is the rubbish that is a BBC and the crap that is a Sun newspaper. 
in fact, you get a wider variety of opinions in my act than you do in mainstream media and politics. <laughs> At least with me, you get the viewpoint of a British Asian living in London. The outlook of someone who's slightly autistic and someone who's also got ADHD. As you probably guessed by now, comedy clubs usually book me just so they can consolidate all the diversity requirements. <laughs> it's a one affordable fucking comedian. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple more things up before I go, Crispin. Um, I like to echo what Joe Bird says, uh, innocent until proven guilty. And with anti-Semitism, a lot of people are getting mixed up with anti-Zionism. Yeah. Zionism is a determination for the Jewish people to have their own homeland, Israel. And I agree with that. But not at the expense of expelling Palestinians. Absolutely. I, uh, like my parents' homeland of India, where they had to flee their village because of religious reasons. Because everyone in that village was Sikh. And they were hairdressers. <laughs> and finally one more thing uh, comrades is that we should call for unity as what Keir Starmer says because it doesn't matter what colour, creed, race religion, ethnicity gender you are we should all come together and fight the top 1% so we can get the best deal in life like I did the best deal I got in life is when I recently signed up for a mobile phone network, specifically for Hindus. Uh, I got unlimited everything, so I could use in my next lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah, good to good to hear you, John. Don and um, and Susie, you're you're there as well, yeah. Hello. How's it going? How's it going? Have you, you haven't got your dressing gown on that you... This is the highlight of my week. It's nice to see you all. Um, no, because it's a, a very political day today, and I know you like to come to me for the political hot takes. Um, That's so right. So my advice to everyone today is uh, just think, what would Columbo do? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So I know, I know you only come here to see my merch, and um, I'm running out now, so I, I don't want to peek too soon. Um, but um, yeah, I was a bit devastated today when I turned the telly on, like a few people, um, because obviously the weekend is Columbo, and um, I um, murder she wrote all day. Can't believe it. No Columbo, <laughs> gutted. I am watching that. Honestly, I I I would I actually cleaned out my um, the cupboard under the sink today instead of watching Murder She Wrote because um, we know Columbo is weekends, right? Um, but I've, I've done a bit of, of research for everyone and it's actually on tomorrow for 10 hours on 5 USA, Columbo Marathon. Hey. So don't worry about the heat wave, don't go out in your garden, sit in and watch seven episodes of Columbo. I've even written down which ones are on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I've, I've even, uh, I've had a bit of time on my hands and um, as I said the other day, me and mother have been doing arts and crafts and um, today we fashioned this pointing finger. <laughs> <laughs> a knitting needle, a knitting needle and a rubber glove and uh, I've tarted it up a bit but I was a bit, I sellotaped it back and I was a bit worried that the sellotape would undo and the, the middle finger would flip off <laughs> but it's um, because I was going to point out the Columbo uh, that are on so I've got my Columbo artwork here so tomorrow at about 5.30 we've got the, the Roddy Dowell one so that's Roddy just there and that's called Short Fuse, good, that's a good episode and then uh, we've also got my, my favourite episode with Ruth Gordon and that's called Try and Catch Me and that's my favourite Columbo ever, so try and get that one. And there she is, there's Ruth Gordon, just there. Um, totally worth making this, wasn't it guys? Um, oh, Johnny Cash up there, look. Johnny Cash. <laughs> Billy Connolly down there. Anybody else want to mention any villains? I'll point them out to you. <laughs> what, did, what did Johnny Cash do? I'm so lonely. Um, Johnny, Cash, Johnny Cash was in another favourite episode called Swan Song, and he, he played a country singer, Kel Surprise, who uh, does a murder. I won't spoil it, but it's very good. And, and the song they keep playing throughout. Uh, get, but he, you do get to see a bit of Johnny Cash playing his guitar and singing in action. Um, but uh, think, I've got, I've got my uh, cooking with Columbo as well. So... Uh, I might have a flick through that and do some recipes at some point. <laughs> but I, I, there, there is more, but I don't want to peek too soon because we don't know how long we're going to be here. But I thought when I run out of Columbo, I'm also a big fan of Torval and Dean, so I might get my Bolero costume out in a few weeks. So, uh, yeah, but I know everyone doesn't 
think I'm very political, but there are some things that I like to stand up for. And when, I, when there's a cause, I really go for it. And uh, at the moment, I've decided to do a protest. So I've decided to not shave my armpits until Cine World reopens. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening. Anybody with me? Yeah, currently the sporting the, the Madonna in the 80s look under there, so uh, <laughs> uh, no pictures of that. But anyway, basically, what would Colombo do? He would uh, act like the fool, outsmart everyone, and always have a boiled egg in his pocket. So, have a lovely weekend, everybody. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Uh, great, great to see you, great to see you again. And uh, and oh, what... can I just say just one more thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, genuinely i just doing a colombo there but it was really nice to see ian hodson um the last time i saw him we were at western super mayor stand up for labor and we stayed in the premier inn with norman lovett and we all had breakfast together and ian referred to a pano chocolate as a chocolate pasty and i have since taken that on board and that's what i call it all the time now in tribute to ian so thank you for that is he in there to, to respond to <laughs> Chocolate pasty. Ian, 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 you can the talk. Food of my homeland. <laughs> Is he gone? No, no, he, he's. No, he's probably there. looking on the planner to see when Colombo's on. No, so, um, so there's a chocolate pasty, isn't it? It's a yeah. chocolate pasty. <laughs> it's chocolate pasty. I call it. Yeah. Now. What else could it be? That was the gift. It's pastry with a chocolate in it. How <laughs> posh are you guys having chocolate? Pasties. This is well, ridiculous. We're breakfast. Probably winning it. We're in quarantine. We can't even get chocolate. Where are you getting the chocolate? <laughs> oh yeah, we, we have to remember this is all this is all pre-coronavirus stuff. Yeah. So oh, you're, you're, you're harking back to a different era here. Um, uh, we don't want to. We don't want people to get too despondent about chocolate pasties and and, and what was available before. Um, so to so to to get us through this pain of not having chocolate pasties um rob are you there yeah i'm in uh, are, are you yeah. are you up for um are you up for doing a a, a couple of songs maybe yeah certainly yeah uh, some songs. coincidentally i thought you might have your guitar there <laughs> yeah. surprising kill surprise <laughs> okay. well Today I went to Tesco's, today the sky was blue. Works in the car park, who could tell you where to queue? Black and yellow tape down, show you where to stand. Everything was thought out, every detail planned. One more lockdown day goes by. One more lockdown day goes by. Well, if you listen to the radio, the news is all bad news. EU offer ventilators, but the Brexit boys refuse. Because they've got to make makes vacuum cleaners and they can't say when. But we'll have British ventilators, so just hold your breath till then. One more Oxford lockdown day goes by. One more lockdown day goes by. Now we're all standing in our doorways, eight o'clock at night, and we clap and cheer the NHS and see who's still all right. So much for herd immunity, even tops get the cough. If we had Tesco workers running the country, we'd be a whole lot better off. One more lockdown day goes by. One more lockdown day goes by. All together, sing along. One more lockdown day goes by. One more lockdown day goes by. 
There it goes. Hey. That's my manifesto. So, <laughs> brilliant. Do you, uh, did you just write that it, it, just this week or so? That was that was actually that was that was last week when we first went out to Tesco's and uh, it was so well organised. Really, we should have the Tesco's. We should have the work. Obviously, we'd have the working class running the country. We are so much better organised. <laughs> but do you think that you, that's a bit upbeat? That one for it's like a bit early in lockdown. That one. I, I want to <laughs> hear your. I want to hear your three months into lockdown. Yeah, yeah. After that, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you. you like, you don't want to sort of like gloom too early. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, statistic rise. And, but you're but you but you're you're, chir you're chirpy. You look chirpy today. It's always nice to have an audience, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I miss. And and you've got. Uh, it was really sad to read uh, yesterday about the um, death of Bill Withers because uh, what I liked about him myself was that. He seemed to disappear from the limelight for kind of decades, uh, as if he, as if he just thought, "Oh, I've done my bit now." Um, whereas a lot of musicians seem to go around touring over and over again, trying to make as much money as they can. And and the guy, he, he did some great songs, and and also he was, um, he seemed like a good guy. I don't, do you know much about his life? Or? Oh, it just sounds a bit like Arthur Rambeau, doesn't it? The sort of French poet that everybody raves about. You do your bit, you do, and then you just disappear, and that's it. There are far too many people. Yes, there are far too many people who just go round and round and round producing worse song after worse song. They get booked. I don't understand how that happens. But it's that fame thing, isn't it? Once you become famous, then you just get away with anything. Can't stop. And I, 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 and I hear Rod Stewart. I mean, Rod Stewart is obviously that's obviously that's a Rod Stewart syndrome, isn't it? Rod Stewart <laughs> hasn't done anything useful in decades. There he is packing the Albert Hall out. Wrapping himself in a union flag every time there's a war. Does he? I didn't know. I didn't know that. Oh I, yeah. I thought he sounded like Bonnie Tyler. That's all I all I remember. Uh, it, he could get done by Bonnie Tyler, can he? Um, so, I, I, have you got a? Uh, I hear that you've been doing a bit of uh, rehearsal on a on a Bill Withers. Is this? Oh, I have. I have. I uh, you're not really a cover um, singer, so this is not my comfort zone. But huh. obviously, for staying for labour, anything. So yeah. So you're going to play us out? To, uh, I'll play with this, yeah. It's not. It's not quite the red flag, but it's got the same kind of message, only without the bloodshed. Sometimes in our lives we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise. We know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. So please swallow your pride. If I have things you need to borrow For no one can feel those of your needs That you won't let show You just call on me brother When you need a hand We all need somebody to lean on I just might have a problem But you'll understand We all need somebody to lean on Lean on me when you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. We all need somebody to lean on. Uh, and that's obviously why we had the welfare state. That's why we have the NHS. Because there are some things you just shouldn't have to pay for. We all need somebody to lean on. So here's to the health workers, the care workers, the firefighters, the bin workers, the education workers, child care workers, retail and communication workers, culture workers. Uh, but not you, Richard Branson, because you sued the NHS. And let's face it, who'd want to lean on Michael Gove except with a mallet? <laughs>
somebody to lean on. Fantastic. Woo! Thank you for the challenge. That was a that was definitely that was a fan, a really that was Rob Johnson style. Uh, it wasn't it weren't yeah. be Bill Withers. You were Rob Johnson doing uh, a song. It was fantastic. Thank you very much, and and thank you to everyone for joining in. I hope that this has persuaded anyone who might be thinking of tearing up their car that it's not really worth doing. Um, as we've got a good community of members who are all f full of laughter and um, care for each other and compassion. And if you leave the Labour Party, it's not particularly more cheerful to be outside it. And we've also got, we've got the hope that we can change things and make things better. And we can't do that if we're outside it. So please stay in and, um, uh, and please, uh, if, you, if you have got any cash and you'd like to donate some money towards this project called uh, Stay Home for Labour, then please do. And I'll send more um, invites to other shows. We've got two a week. And the next one is on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. And we'll have a, a guest speaker and we'll be doing more music, more comedy and entertaining you on this lockdown time that could go on for months. So <laughs> let, that cheer, let that be a cheerful thought. Um, and <laughs> anyway, good night to everyone or good afternoon. It doesn't really matter what time it is now, does it? So uh, <laughs> see you all on Wednesday. <laughs>